Good evening, friends. I now request Sri Ravindra Garu, a leading educationist from Telangana. I request him to recite, to help him take the lead in national anthem. Start. ಜಾಗೆ <laughs> ತವ ಶುಭಾಶಿಷ ಮಾಗೆ ಗಾಯ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಧ ಜನ ಘನ ಮಂಗಲದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹಿಂದ್ lighting of the lamp by chief guest and other dignitaries from the dais situation in the entire planet earth as you are aware youngsters in uk they had to sit before the parliament demanding the imposition of climate emergency the crisis at the global level as per the world commission on environment and development is very grim our planet earth is facing several problems among them we have the depletion of the ozone layer global warming loss of biodiversity spreading desertization and the ever increasing threat of nuclear it could be we can call it as nuclear threat the danger from the reactors the danger from the bombs in addition to this worldwide there is a huge debate going on and the nations are competing with each other to design development in order to fulfill the aspirations of their kind of people but unfortunately not a single country in the entire world has ever defined what development is and they are all pursuing what we call in pursuit of goods and prosperity friends in in the year 1972 a wonderful book has been published by the club of rome and that particular book is entitled limits to growth they they have they said that development the calculation of growth rate should take into consideration the depletion of natural resources and the increasing cost of pollution but ever since much water has flowed down the yamuna or every river in the world 
and most of the rivers are polluted. It has become increasingly difficult for people to continue to make a decent living. If this is the situation today, what are we going to hand over to the coming generations? Friends, we are not the last generation to live on this planet Earth. Life has to continue. We have a responsibility towards the coming generations. With that noble intention, Council for Green Revolution, on its own, it planted about 3.5 million saplings in Hyderabad and Karnataka. In addition to that, it floated an organization, an umbrella organization known as GRACE, Green Alliance for Conservation of Eastern Guards. And uh, this particular organization, we have our chairman here, Dilip Redigaru, he will uh, speak about that. We thank our Chief Guest, Honorable Former President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee. He has always inspired us. I had the opportunity of listening to his speeches in Hyderabad also. Friends, while welcoming the Chief Guest and the Guest of Honor, Mr. M. C. Mehta, who is very well known in the entire world on this particular subject, we also have in the audience distinguished Dr. Vinod Sethi of the Capital Foundation Society of India. With these few words, we are all gathered here. Basically, to understand the Eastern Guards, this report is a wonderful report. And the crisis in Eastern Guards is very serious. Already it's a victim of urbanization, deforestation, industrialization, mining. And, you know, the crisis is so severe that uh, Eastern Guards, about 1,700 kilometers square length, the whole thing is virtually damaged. It has become extremely difficult for the poorest of the poor who are living there, particularly the Adivasis. They are unable to make, continue to make a reasonable living. It is with this intention we have approached the universities in Orissa, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and we had all university-wise meetings, seminars, workshops and this report is a, is a culmination of all that effort. Uh, with these few words, I welcome one and all, including the media. And the event today, and President, M.C. Mehtaji, Leela Lashpaniti Garu, and all the August gathering here. So good evening everybody. As uh, Professor rightly mentioned just now, by watching the scenario on the planet Earth, the initiation has been taken by Leela Lashmaridi Garu and Lashmaridi Garu almost a decade back to do something for the well-being of society. Under the able guidance of Professor Purushottam Redigaru, exactly 10 years back, Council for Green Revolution started its activities. Just in the beginning, the simple and humble beginning uh, with planetation, we started. But later, over a period of time, we could able to understand that uh, this promotion of green alone can't solve the problem. The many issues like uh, production of water bodies, uh, bringing awareness among the people about the plastic and its usage and how it is uh, doing damage for the ecosystem. So like many related issues has been taken up by the Council of Great Revolution. Uh, in the process, we also identified the need for protection of Eastern Guards, which the spread over of 1700 kilometers into the different states like Orissa, Andhra Pradesh, now Telangana, uh, of late the state emerged five, six years back, and Tamil Nadu, the borders of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Especially in the Telugu states, its uh, spread is uh, nearly 900 kilometers all along the eastern coast, along the sea coast. For protection of this, what we have to do, as a small social organization, uh, civil society organization, what we can do? 
uh, with that thought process after uh, a brainstorm with the like-minded people, uh, CGR intended to provide a platform where all interested this, uh, organizations as well as individuals and the uh, professors of universities can come together for a better cause uh, for promotion, protection, uh, as well as bringing awareness among the people and more than that, to work as uh, a policy, a <coughs> policy advocacy, and to work as a pressure group, we started activity. And in the meanwhile, uh, with many who participated in several programs, we organized right from uh, Bhuvaneshwar, uh, we organized one national conference and uh, Tirupati. Uh, in all our regional conferences and national conferences, uh, Greens Alliance for Conservation of Eastern Guards took the universities as the base points for in inculcating this idea into the fresh minds of youth uh, who are in the universities by the by tapping the knowledge of the university teaching faculties. Uh, after uh, completing uh, five regional conferences and two national conferences, we thought that there is no much literature as like uh, Many reports on Western Guards, uh, Mohan God Gill's report, and many other uh, worthy reports. We thought that we should come out with a comprehensive report which will enable the people to understand about the rich uh, natural resources like medicinal plants and the forest, minerals, uh, and, and, and the biodiversity. By the by, uh, the very primitive sex like chain shoes and many other Adivasi. A human habitations are uh, badly affected because of a lot of people activity there in the forest. Uh, by taking these aspects, uh, we uh, went around uh, these uh, states uh, where the Eastern Gods went over is there. And uh, we compiled that book with the guidance of many stakeholders, uh, with number of hundreds of papers have been submitted in Above Nature Conference as well as uh, and Tirupati conference. Uh, even by uh, going around and uh, to the lives of the uh, Adivasis who were badly affected and taking their note, uh, and we incorporated better practices where uh, forest protected and uh, natural resources protected, and the bad practice also we exposed in that which should not be happened. And we made certain requests to the government of India by the by. Uh, asking and requesting the international agencies like United Nations uh, for identifying this Eastern Guard as a biodiversity hotspot and government of India to constitute one comprehensive legal authority which can have a regulation over this and to protect this area. With many aspects are there. This I hope that uh, not out of context to mention certain uh, people who are here incidentally uh, Dr. Tulsi Rao Garu, uh, who worked for 14 long years in the Mananu Tiger Project uh, as a forest expert and even today is handling one UN project for protection of forest. And Narsimhariti Garu, who is a policy expert and uh, he, he usually gives inputs for political parties also. And Council, of, uh, Council for Green Revolution as well as Grace uh, lost 2019 election, before election, we requested all the political parties personally going to their offices uh, to incorporate certain aspects of protection of environment in their election manifesto, that green manifesto also uh, we requested them. Like that many people who are here and incidentally today Sai Bhaskar is not there, geoscientist and many other contributed a lot in this. Uh, for all these initially we considered that uh, and I, under the able guidance of Professor Purushottam Retiyaru with Powered by Leela Lakshmariti, Lakshmariti, we are carrying out these. And this valuable book, uh, with the release of this book by none other than eminent uh, son of this soil and great personality, Pranam Mukherjee ji, we will, way forward, we will go ahead with spreading this message into the nook and corner of this uh, country about that uh, natural resources which we are to protect, not uh, for the future generations, even uh, in the advanced situation today prevailing on this in this planet, present generations also uh, facing a lot of problem because of uh, damage to the ecosystem. With these few words, I 
uh, uh, consider it as a great privilege uh, in the journey of uh, Council of Council for Green Revolution as well as grace this is going to be a great occasion and it will give definitely further inspiration for us to carry this in a bigger way. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you very much, sir. I have great pleasure in inviting Mr. M.C. Mehta. The problem, you know, whenever we talk about M.C. Mehta, he actually represents the conscience of the people, particularly the suffering people, the marginalized, the pollution-affected people, the displaced people, the oppressed people. So we have, we always feel that he is our voice, both in the NGT and the Supreme Court. And with his able guidance and support, we have been winning innumerable battles in the court, and we intend to continue the same. So I now request Mr. M.C. Mehta, who is with us now. and friends of the guys and I would like to first thank the uh, Grace and the CGR for inviting and uh, me for this function because when I saw the part and my friends they told me that this is a Eastern Guards um, because Eastern Guards, Guards, Western Guards, Himalayas they are very important. Without these, the nation is, the world, this, India is not India that way. And the Ganga ji. I, first of all, I would like to thank uh, our uh, chief guest who pioneered uh, and I became so emotional at that time. When he was prime, uh, finance minister of his country, at that time, Dr. G.D. Agarwal, who was a, who turned a, a great scientist, who turned Swami, and uh, he was on fast turn to death. And I remember that he closed down four uh, major mega dams in the Himalayas. And uh, sir, that, that so your action uh, saved this, uh, the Ganga Day, as well as at that time Dr. G.D. Agarwal. But uh, later. The same Dr. G. D. Agarwal is no more now because of the inaction on the part of the government of India. It, he was a great scientist we have lost. And uh, it, it was just uh, one day on 11th uh, October, his anniversary was the second anniversary, death anniversary was there. So it is very shocking. But uh, the, uh, in history we will see that what the, the government did, uh, how it, it, it had the courage to stop four dams at that time. And that cost about 600 crores, 600 crores. So that, that last, uh, uh, the government said that yes. So this is a wonderful action when the, the sensitive governments are there, they can really do something. But uh, if the sensitivity is not there, whatever you want, uh, there should be no difference in, uh, uh, in saying and uh, going. So if you say something, then you do something about it. So these things are happening. But uh, in short, my, my, as far as the Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats are concerned, and the coastal zone, I have done all these cases and, uh, in the Supreme Court. And uh, these, uh, uh, these are all ecologically sensitive areas, all most sensitive and vulnerable areas. And these uh, need protection. <coughs> Uh, we have the laws, but the laws are not being enforced. That is uh, a tragedy in this country, that we make laws, but we make them only for breaking the laws. We don't obey those laws, we don't do anything. And then just, we say every, at every platform that yes, we, we have the laws, we have all those things, we do everything, and then nothing uh, is unpractical. I don't want to, uh, to, to go further, uh, because I think that this audience is intelligent enough to know, understand what I am trying to say. So this is what, so my, my this study, why I am saying about this study of Eastern Ghats, the 
which has been conducted, this will be helpful to me in the court and at various forums because it has been done with the, by eminent persons, those who have the, the zeal to do that. So that is why you know, I, I, I would be very happy uh, to, to see that uh, more and more people, they know uh, what is this study. The Eastern Guards, because I am doing the cases, I even now I am doing the cases on, on these issues, and so this will, I will try to see that uh, this, this uh, report is uh, quoted in the in the in, in various at various forums, and uh, so I uh, uh, the basically my lords the the whole whole thing is that the the, the things are going uh, out of hand actually. So if we are not going to take steps, the, we are all going to be washed out. Uh, on the one hand, the Galias, and on the other hand, there are. The, the coastal zones. So what are we going to do? So we are talking about the great nation, we are talking about so many things and we are dreaming so, we are daydreamers actually, and it is not practical the things are happening which the nation should uh, be proud of. And that is what my anxiety is, and I think that this, uh, the people, those who are here, the intellectuals, the scientists, the professors, and so many uh, others, those who have a voice, they can raise the voice and we should be able to uh, sensitize the parliamentarians and the people, those who are in the authority, they should also understand that yes, otherwise if we are not going to protect the environment, then the, the day is not far off that uh, it, will, it will create more disasters for the nation. Thank you very much. request our chief guest, Honorable Former mm -hmm. President of India, Sri Pranam Mukatigaru, to release the Eastern Guards Environment Outlook. by our beloved Chief Guest, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Honorable Former President of India. Good evening. Shumati K. Leela Lakshmareddi. President, Council for Green Revolution, CR Deliberative Chairman, Grace, CMC Matter, Environmentalists, Agassi Award, Awardee, and Advocate Supreme Court of India, Professor K. Purushottam Reddy, Environmentalist, and author of the book, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's indeed a very happy occasion for all of us to be present in this function on the occasion of the release of Eastern Guard environmental outlook. I'm sure it will prove to be a significant contribution to our understanding of the Eastern Guards. At the outset, 
I would like to congratulate the authors of this publication, Dr. N. Sai Bhaskar Reddy, Dr. K. K. Tulsi Rao, and C. Uma Shankar Reddy, Uma Mahishya Reddy. I would also like to place on the court my appreciation for the Council for Green Revolution for taking up this initiative to bring the Eastern Guards on the environment and forefront. I am told that the Council of Green Revolution started its initiative of Greece Alliance for Conservation of the Stern Guard on the 5th of June 2011. Distinguished guests, the environment we live, it has been kept on the sidelines of our priorities over years. Lately, however, owing to various catastrophic climate changes that are taking place, its effects can no longer be wished away. Our beautiful life nurturing plan planet has provided humanity with everything it needs to sustain and even flourish. The human race has undoubtedly flourished, but at what cost? Our greed has far exceeded our needs. As human beings, we were to live we have failed to do so. The world is now changing in ways we could never have imagined. From mighty Amazonian jungles burning to the polar ice shelters across the planet, the world is witnessing a rapid loss of biodiversity, desertification, global warming, pollution, resource depletion, and exponential growth of human population, putting undue pressure on the limited resources. The burden of serving humans is now exceeding the carrying capacity and the planetary boundaries of the earth. Nations all over the world are witnessing violent conflicts over resources, famine, food, potable waters, and arable land, and shelter are becoming scarce. The world is losing thousands of hectares in the tropical forests each year. This year alone, we witness massive fires in the Amazon forests. Many nations have declared climate emergencies, the frequency and severity of droughts, water shortages and floods have increased. Our planet has become warmer by 1.5 degrees Celsius. The water in our rivers, lakes, and even the underground has been polluted, and our oceans have become the dumping ground for plastics and no, non biogas <coughs> credible materials. This is only naming a few of the consequences as indeed the causes of the climate changes. History tells us how the primitive human settlements were dependent on nature. The best example for this is how all the major cities all over the world without exception are located next to rivers and sources of fresh water. The primitive man's life was so dependent on nature that he made gods out of the forces. Our stories, folklore, festivals, traditions are all, popul all populated, populated by the flora, fauna, and the elements of nature. Our own heritage as a country is one of the symbioses of man and nature. The plants, animals, birds of this country are closely linked with its culture and languages. All the ancient scriptures such as Vedas, Upanishads and Puranas direct us to live in harmony with nature. Our mighty mythologies such as Ramayana and Mahabharata and other great epics have backdrops of intact and vibrant 
forest wilderness that fostered life. Our forefathers regarded the earth as most revered mother. In the morning prayer, after awakening from the sleep, we say, Samudra Vasana Devi, Parvatastha Namandali, Vishnu Patni Namastubham, Padas Parsham Kamashrami. This is the morning prayer which means, O oh Mother Earth, who has the ocean as clothes and mountains and forests on her body, who is the wife of Lord Vishnu, I bow to you. Please forgive me for touching you with my feet. This speaks of the reverence we had of our planet, our natural environment. Ecological picture of the country is grim today. Most of the vibrant Indian <coughs> landmass has already lost its biodiversity to unsustainable low levels. I am afraid that if we continue this way, a significant number of flora and fauna, including the medicinal plants, will be lost to us forever. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Eastern Ghats, the ancient mountain range of our country is an example and a classic representative of the vulnerable ecosystems in India. Though it stands hard to the ecosystem primacy of Himalayas and Western Ghats, its wider diversity and historical cultural entity is unique. It is one of the most important ecological regions in the country. This region was an intact wilderness with its forests, grasslands, streams, and a wide variety of flora and fauna only a few decades back. Now the human intrusion is so heavy with destructive activities like logging, mining, building, or dams, roads, and encroaching settlements that the region faces an unprecedented existential crisis. A large number of these activities are unauthorized and have rendered these one serene lost green hills into nearly barren landscape. I am saddened to know <coughs> that nearly half of the forest ecosystem of the Eastern Ghats have been completely wiped out. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, while it is true that much loss has already been incurred, but it is not too late to turn the things around. However, it is not the task of one, an individual, a community, or even an organization for these. We have to work collectively as one national and indeed international entity in pursuit of the common goal. <clears throat> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the biological integrity of Eastern Ghats has to be protected with urgency. The natural loss and glory of these Ghats need to be revived. The fauna on the verge of extinction need to be rehabilitated back to their very own homes. I do understand that it is a daunting task, but it is the task that needs to be done undertaken without any further delay. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in this context I would like also to attract your attention beyond the immediate. We need to develop a deeper understanding and closer connection with nature from the very foundational years. You must ask your children to plant a sapling and tend to eat like a family member, you will see that your child will not only be conscious towards nature, but would further take initiatives to protect it. We must also inculcate the environmental leadership among the youth and encourage them to take on campaign for awareness. The use of paper for printing out information like submitted forms or tickets for rain 
out for your trouble can now be done paper free simply from our devices. Our smallest of set actions have behind a large carbon footprint. Everything we plan to throw something away, we must ask ourselves if we no longer can recycle or reuse it ourselves. If not, we must not then think of something who may have a use for that object. Even after that, if we cannot meaningfully appropriate it, we must discard it only for further recycling. As a citizen of India, it is given to our fundamental duties under Article 51, Clause A, Subclause G, to protect and preserve the environment. It says, I quote, it shall be the duty nature, in the environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and to have compassion for living creatures. True national spirit is incomplete without compassion and responsibility towards nature and its ecosystem. On the other hand, it is equally imperative for the state to make climate change and protection of the environment central to the policies. Article 48, Clause A of the Constitution says, I quote, the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. I, unquote, I stress upon the sustainable development narrative for our country as a considered opinion. Measures such as massive awareness, holistic perspective, environment positive policies, empathetic and effective institutions, and the proactive involvement of the local communities have to be adopted. I wish the cause of our ailing environment becomes a prime and sustained national agenda. The publication of these serves as a key instrument for creating ecological stewardship in the country and inspires a wide range of stakeholders for the conservation of eastern girls. I wish this book and other efforts like these catalyze political will and community mobilization to ensure a healthy and sustainable future of the region. I also hope that the indigenous people have a key role in decision-making process for the future of the region as is their right. These very people stand as the guardians and trustees of the ecological heritage. Towards the end, I hope that the Eastern Ghats become one of the nation's foremost conservation priorities and an exemplar of conservation and sustainable development. I call upon all the higher learning institutions in the region to aid the cause of, uh, with their wisdom. I call upon the civil society organizations, individuals and political fronts to join hands in this noble task. I am sure that this publication will serve in the cause of halting the ecological destruction of Eastern Ghats and enable its renewal and rejuvenation of the ecosystem. I once again congratulate the Council for Green Revolution and wish them success in their future endeavors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir, for your inspiring your blessings, not only for the book, but your, your call for the nation. You know that each one of us has a duty to protect the environment under Article 51A. At the same time, government is duty bound to protect it under 48A. But then, it is like, you know, government and the people, we need, it's like a triangle. 
as Justice Rajendra Kumar very often says, on one side is Article 48, the other side 51 A, and at the bottom line is the right to life. Thank you very much, sir. You have inspired us, and your message definitely will go a long way in protecting the environment. And now, it is our very pleasant duty. We are all Indians, and we are all very grateful to our chief guest. It is our custom that we honor. So this program is felicitation of chief guest, our honorable former president of India, Sri Pranav Mukherjee Garu, the felicitation program now. by Srimati K. Leela Lakshma Redigar, the President of the Council for Green Revolution. I request everybody to be seated. Long life, great help for our former President of Great India from Nepal. His, His Excellency also lost. one and all. At the outset, I take this opportunity to extend vote of thanks on behalf of Council for Green Revolution and Greens Alliance for Conservation of Eastern Gods. We thank Honorable Pranab Mukherjee Ji, former President of India, who accepted our invitation with a great heart and spared his valuable time. Sir, your esteemed presence enriched the value of the program and enhanced our responsibility. Sir, you are the unique personality of India because of your educational academic background. We thank you immensely for releasing our book, Eastern Guards Environment Outlook. We also thank from our bottom of heart, Sri MC Mehta, eminent environmentalist, you are the supporting us right from initial journey of the CGR and Grace for a noble cause. We thank Sri Vinod Sethiji, Secretary General Capital Foundation Society, who is a key personality for CGR and Grace in organizing various programs at New Delhi. We thank Professor Purushottam Redisar uh, for his relentless support and mentoring all us from the day one. Sir, you are the leading force behind us. You only ideated the concept of grace. We thank Sri Dilip Reddy, Chairman of Grace. We thank the authors of the book and all the associates of the book. Our special thanks to the universities from the five states located in Eastern Ghats area. We also thank organizations like Sri Shailam Devasthanam, Tirupati Tirumala Devasthanam, and Simachalam Devasthanam for their great support to CGR and Grace. We are highly grateful to Village Development Committee of Almaspalli, where the birthplace of CGR organization for their continuous journey with the, under the leadership of Sri K. Vijay Bhaskaradi. We are highly thankful to the local press and media for their great support and encouragement. 
we are grateful to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar International Center, New Delhi for their support in providing this wonderful hall to us. We are grateful to conveners Dr. Natsma Reddy, Dhanti, and Sri Indra Sina Reddy, Shiva Prasad, Kesho Reddy, and the co-conveners Priya Kumari, Pavan Kumar, Gayatri, and we acknowledge the support of Andhra Association Delhi, Delhi Jagannath Temple Trust, Delhi Tamil Sangam. We are grateful to Sai Yashwan, Punala and Sri Harikishan for the making key arrangements last but not the least. We are grateful to all the family members of CJR and Grace, other, the other supporting staff who provided all the logistics and support in organizing this wonderful event. We remember and acknowledge all the people who helped us in the journey of CJR and Grace in the last one decade. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much.